Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a lot to cover from Saturday and Sunday's practices. The big takeaway was seeing Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor together on the field. It's wild to think they only played two snaps together last season. Everyone's buzzing about the recent scuffle between Michael Pittman Jr. and Jalen Jones. It only took three practices before punches were thrown. The altercation happened during a one-on-one -on -one rep and Jones got flagged, either for a hold or defensive pass interference. The coaches had to step in to break it up. This isn't surprising to me at all. Pittman is one of the most competitive guys on our team, and Jones, a seventh-round draft pick from last year, is fighting hard for a starting spot. He was initially a special teams gunner, but played so well that the Colts had to keep him on the field. With Dallas Flowers back, Jones is competing with him for the second corner spot across from Juju Brents. Kenny Moore will be playing the nickel position. In the NFL, especially in training camp, these kinds of skirmishes are just part of the game. It shows these players are hungry and determined. As long as it doesn't escalate into a bigger issue, I'm all for it. I've been a Colts fan my whole life, and I believe we have a shot at the Super Bowl. We won nine games last season and were so close to winning the division. Just a drop pass or a better throw away. Everyone's forgetting the Browns game that hurt us. The refs made some mistakes, and if we had won that game, we would have won the division. We had some things out of our control, like Anthony Richardson's injury and Jonathan Taylor's contract situation. But right now, I'm feeling great about the team. The intensity in camp has been exciting. One surprising development, the defense has been shining these past few days. The defense was overshadowed by the offense on day one, but now the interior line, Grover Stewart and DeForest Buckner, is dominating. On the edges, Sam Iguavoen and Quidipe have been making their presence felt. Ekuano is a rookie, so they're easing him in, but he's been unstoppable against the second team. The defensive line is looking strong, but we still have questions about the secondary. We've talked about Jalen Jones, Juju Brents, and Kenny Moore. Moore's already one of the top nickelbacks, but we need him to keep improving. Dallas Flowers has to prove he's back to his old self after a season-ending injury. The cornerback position is young and inexperienced, but has a lot of potential. Last season, Chris Ballard bet on the offensive line, and it paid off. Bernard Ryman was a pleasant surprise, and now we're hoping for similar success from other players like Fry Braden Smith was back at practice today after missing the last couple of days. With Smith in the lineup, our offensive line is looking top-notch. When everyone's healthy, I truly believe our offensive line is one of the best in the AFC, right up there with teams like the Lions and Packers. Ryan Kelly's contract extension is a priority for the team, according to owner Jim Ursay. In terms of Sunday's practice, there's not much buzz yet. Being a small market team, news often trickles out slowly. I'm recording this right after practice, so updates are still coming in. A few highlights from practice. Joe Flacco returned after missing Saturday's session due to a funeral for a former teammate. Josh Downs has been impressive this camp. While Michael Pittman Jr., Alec Pierce, and A.D. Mitchell are grabbing the headlines, Downs is really standing out. He's quicker, more explosive, and seems to be forming a strong connection with Anthony Richardson. Last season, Downs made some big plays, and this year, he looks ready to be a major asset. Jim Ursay also spoke to the media recently, and although he was on a golf cart due to health issues, he shared some important thoughts. He's excited about seeing Richardson and Taylor together, and believes the team has what it takes to make the playoffs and win the AFC South. Ursay feels we're far enough removed from Andrew Luck's retirement to have a fresh perspective on the team. Losing Luck was a huge blow. He was a generational talent, and his departure was tough for fans like me. His talent was undeniable, and his impact on the field was incredible. I could talk about Andrew Luck for hours. His legacy is still strong, and his retirement was a major moment for the Colts. Moving forward, the key will be keeping Anthony Richardson healthy and ensuring he has a standout career. 
That's the path to success for us now. If Anthony Richardson can't stay healthy, it's natural to wonder about what might have been with Andrew Luck, but the focus now is on keeping Richardson healthy and letting him play his game. It's great to hear both Richardson and Jim Ursay say they're not going to change his style. For me, that's music to my ears. Think of it this way. Would you limit Stephen Curry's three-point shots? Of course not. Similarly, Richardson's mobility is a huge strength. Like Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen, two of the best quarterbacks right now, Richardson needs to use his legs to make plays. Mahomes can escape the pocket and pick up first downs, while Allen uses his mobility to create opportunities. Even if he's not running, being able to move around in the pocket is crucial. Richardson should definitely keep playing the way he has been. I'm all for it. Finally, Chris Ballard addressed concerns about the secondary. He mentioned the possibility of bringing in a veteran, but he wants to see the young guys step up and compete. As he put it, I'm not saying we won't do something, but I want to see these young guys get after it and compete.